What's the secret to finding a lot of gold fast? The answer is a metal detector. The biggest nuggets I've ever found, and nearly all of the big nuggets found in the last 40 years, have been found with metal detectors. I've done a lot of videos about finding gold with metal detectors, and now I'm doing a complete guide to nugget detecting in two parts, and this is part one. I'm Chris Ralph, the professional prospector, and I've been finding nuggets with metal detectors for decades. This guide will be for beginners, but it'll also be for guys who maybe have gotten started with nugget detecting and would like to think more or consider uh, how what they can do to increase their skill and find more gold. In each of the two parts, I'll cover five things that Guys ask, mostly new guys in this first video will be mostly questions that new guys ask about prospecting for nuggets with metal detectors, but are also good skills to brush up for guys who have some experience but want to do better. The second video, I'll talk about five critical skills that you need to master in order to be successful at finding gold nuggets with your metal detector. Both of these skill sets are important, so be sure to check out both this part one and the next one, part two. Now, metal detecting works because metal detectors find things that conduct electricity, and pretty much all metals conduct electricity. But there are some things that do conduct electricity but aren't metals. There are very few minerals that actually conduct electricity well enough to set off a metal detector. Most, however, most rocks and, and other types of soil things don't conduct electricity, and that's how metal detectors work. They see the things that conduct electricity, and because gold is a metal and it conducts electricity, your metal detector will see gold. Unfortunately, most trash, nails, old bolt, bolts, bits of tin can, bits of aluminum, uh, are also metals and will also conduct and so your metal detector will see those kinds of things too but some metal detectors have discrimination and we'll talk more about that as we go through this guide to metal detecting now gold isn't everywhere and especially gold that can be seen with a, a metal detector has to be large enough and near enough to the surface for the metal detector to see it However, when nuggets do occur near the surface, they tend to be in groups, which are called by prospectors patches, patches of nuggets. And I've found my share of patches over the years, and usually when you get into a good patch, you may be talking about several ounces, maybe as small as a half an ounce or something like that, but you may be talking about quite a few ounces depending on the size of the patch. They vary a lot in size. But being successful with a metal detector and finding nuggets is a skill, and you have to learn that skill. Uh, a lot of guys think, well, I'll buy a metal detector and then I'll just go out and find all kinds of gold with it, it'll be great. But the problem is, buying a metal detector no more makes you a successful prospector than buying a pipe wrench makes you a journeyman plumber, or buying a voltmeter makes you an experienced electrician, or a golf set of golf clubs makes you a pro golfer. Once you have the tools, you have to then learn the skill necessary to use the tools. And that's what this video is about. Now in all of these individual skills, I've actually done more detailed videos. And what I'm recommending to you is, as a part of this process of doing the work to learn the skill of nugget detecting, that you look at the additional homework videos that go with this. So basically I'll have additional videos for you to watch to learn even in more detail about each of these points and you need to be able to put in the work you know if you think that it there's shortcuts and you can just you know not put in the effort and just walk out there and be successful you know i'm, I'm sorry you're 150 years too late to be out just walking around tripping over nuggets it takes knowledge it takes skill and that's what this video and this both parts, part one and two, is about teaching you those skills and giving you the skill and experience that I've gained in decades of prospecting to help you get started and give you a head start in getting successful in finding gold nuggets with a metal detector. Now the first question that I get asked the most, especially by new guys who are looking into prospecting with a metal detector is, you know, what's the best metal detector? You know, what should I buy? And that's a perfectly great question, 
But one of the things I'm gonna tell you to do is to think before you purchase. That's really a critical thing. You don't wanna just get excited and rush out and buy the first thing you can lay your hands on. Way too many guys do that. They get overly excited. Oh, they wanna go out and find some gold. And that's great, I'm glad you got the excitement. But think about things before you purchase. There are a number of considerations you should think about, and these include what kinds of detectors are on the market. There is no one detector that's the best overall, and also the cheapest, and also the most powerful, and also the most sensitive. I'm sorry, they all have different focuses, and if you select one that's powerful in this area, you may be not doing so well in this area, but if you select one that's good at this, it may not do so good at that. So learning what's on the market and the trade-offs that you have to make in order to buy a detector and, and what your detector is gonna do well and maybe do okay with, that's part of learning what's on the market. The other thing is your budget. You know, your, <laughs> You know, some of you guys will have lots of money and maybe budget is no issue. Others of you guys, it's, it's a critical issue. Some of you may need to think about saving money in order to buy a better quality detector. But the whole thing belongs with think about what you are going to purchase. And what goes along with that is, is understanding what the detector can do, what it's capable of. There's different technologies, what technologies do what well. So. I've got an extra video for you to watch right now, and I'm gonna put a link to it up here, and it talks about the 10 considerations that you really need to think about and understand before you buy a detector. I hope you'll take a look at this. Um, I'm gonna keep going on these, and go through it after each one of them I put. You can always go on with the video, come back to this video, come back to the other videos just to check them out. So, let's move on to our second point. How deep will it go? I get guys ask me that all the time. I talk about detectors and, and they say, well, you talked about this detector, but you didn't tell how deep it would go. Well, a lot of times guys want some number like, this detector will see 11 inches or this detector will see two feet. And there is no simple number like that. The depth that your detector will see depends on the size of the target. The smaller the target, the shallower it has to be. You know, if, if you had a, a, a nugget the size of a softball, maybe you could see it at three feet or four feet, probably more like three feet, depending on what kind of detector you have. So the size of the target makes a huge difference. The coil that you're using makes a big difference. Little coils see small nuggets better, but they see them shallow. And big coils see deeper, but they'll ignore the tiniest nuggets. They won't have enough sensitivity to see the tiny stuff, but they'll see bigger stuff deeper than the little coil that sees small stuff shallow. So you gotta understand the process of how deep your detector will go. There's other factors too. The shape of the nugget makes a huge difference. You know, if it's solid or near spherical, or if it's flat and like a cornflake, and, and, and especially if it's flat, you know, how's it oriented? Is it the edge of the, the flat nugget pointed up or is the edge of the flat nugget parallel to the ground? All these factors make a huge difference. So there is no number for any detector that explains how deep it'll go. Now, if you want to get into the details and all the different factors that are involved with knowing how deep a detector will go and the different technologies and how that affects the depth that a detector will go or what kinds of coils, sizes of coils that you can use. I did a, a video on that about how deep your detector will go and I'm gonna put a link to that right above us right now. And again, you can click on that now or you can come back later and take a look at this. Just go through this video and then come back to those. So your homework is to check out my video on how deep your metal detector will go. The next question that I get asked a lot is, how easy is it to find gold with a metal detector? You know, can you just walk out there and, and find nuggets everywhere? I get guys who've never found a nugget in their life tell me, yeah, I figure I can go out there and I'll probably average a half an ounce to an ounce a day. 
So they're, they're saying they're going to make a thousand to two thousand dollars a day. Um, if you could make a thousand to two thousand dollars a day with no previous experience, <laughs> guess what? There'd be ten million guys out there already ahead of you. That isn't how it works. Even if you're experienced, I mean, I certainly have had days of half ounce to an ounce and even more than an ounce, no problem. But I get days where, you know, I might make one dollar or less or five dollars or twenty dollars or fifty dollars it's just a matter of what the ground is going to yield for you now how easy is it to find well remember i said that this is a skill and it, you know it's like buying a pipe wrench or buying a voltmeter and suddenly you're a journeyman plumber you know it it's a skill that you learn and yes once you find a right place and get over it, it's not that hard to dig it. But there's a whole set of skills that goes with learning to find gold nuggets, including being able to uh, hear and identify and dig a target and get it out of the ground, take a look at it, see what you got, whether it's gold or trash or whatever. But in all the process of learning to find gold, you need to keep this attitude of not giving up and surrendering. Far, far too many guys will uh, get excited about nugget detecting. They'll get some money together and buy a nice detector. They'll go out a couple of times with no previous skill in hunt hunting nuggets. Go out a couple of times, um, find a few pieces of trash, get discouraged, give up put their detector in the closet and it never gets out of the closet except for when the guy decides to sell it. They give up. And, and that's what I'm telling you is it's a difficult thing. It takes time to learn. It takes time to practice. I'm giving you a lot of skill and knowledge and experience that you know will help boost you along the way, but there's Still some element that you need to get out there and do it for yourself. I mean, I can't describe to you the sounds of nuggets and different targets. It's some of that stuff you got to learn by doing. But I'm helping you along the way so that you will get out there with a lot of knowledge and skill when you go to try it. So don't give up. Know that it's it's difficult. In fact, in all honesty, I do tell people too. Uh, that nugget detecting is the most difficult way to find gold. You want to find a little bit of gold, go out with a pan and snipe or a sluice box, dry washer, something like that. But with nugget detecting, you know, with pan and sluice and dry washer, you can get dust sized particles and you can get a little pinch of gold. And at the end of the day, you pan down your concentrates, and ooh, there's a nice little bit of, of gold in there, and you can feel good about that. But with nugget detecting, you gotta find pieces that are big enough for your nugget detector to see. And that means not dust. You know, your, your metal detector doesn't see dust. Your metal detector sees little nuggets. Sometimes, if you have a nice sensitive detector, you can see little pickers if they're fairly shallow. But you know, the little pickers down a foot, no metal detector's gonna see those. You need to have the little pickers be shallow or you need a little bit bigger nuggets. Uh, you know, half a gram, gram, um, penny weight, couple, couple grams, you know, that kind of size, your nugget will, your detector will see them, those nuggets a little bit deeper. So it, it's, it's not easy. So how easy is it to learn to find gold? Well, it depends on how much effort you put into it, but you got to have that attitude of not giving up and you got to be willing to work and you got to be willing to learn. And I put a little link to that, to uh, my homework video for you to watch. Uh, up above here and again you can uh, finish with this video and then go back to check the homework out but uh, that's uh, something that's going to help you learn about finding gold with the detector. Next I want to talk about uh, how can I find places to go dig and prospect and that's a question I get asked. Well, How do I find a place because you know, a lot of places are claimed I don't want to trespass and I don't want to get kicked off and I don't want somebody to call the police on me and that's no good. So, uh, you know, I want to find a place to dig and prospect where I'm not going to get in any trouble and there's not going to be a problem. And, and if I find some gold, I can keep it and I, nobody's going to arrest me for stealing their gold. 
Great question. It really is a good question. To be successful, you need to have places that you can go out and detect and have a good chance to find gold and, and then go find some. And it's true that lots of places are almost blanketed over with claims. A lot of good places that you know might otherwise be interested in are blanketed over by other people's claims. Sometimes guys think, yeah, well, maybe I'll just go to the expense of buying a claim. You know, I'll, it could be several thousand dollars and even more um, to buy a claim. And I gotta tell you, don't do that, okay? Especially if you're a brand new guy. If you're if you're an experienced guy and you know all what you're doing, you don't need any help, and you already got the skill to find nuggets, you know, if you want to buy a claim, you can do that. But if you're a new guy, don't go out and, and buy a claim. Here's why. There's a number of folks out there that get very marginal ground, highly questionable. Maybe it has a trace of gold on it, almost nothing. And then they'll sell them to new guys. And the problem is the new guys don't know how to sample it. So you're a new guy, uh, the, the seller says, oh, I got this great claim, it's full of gold, and you're gonna drag it rich if you buy my claim for $5,000. And, uh, and you believe what he says, and maybe you live in New Jersey, and, and he's in Arizona, and, and you take his word for it and send him $5,000. Then you get out there, and maybe you find, you find nothing with your metal detector, and you might go out and pan and find a couple of tiny specks of gold. And, and the other guy's taking your money and now you're, you've lost $5,000. I don't recommend that. I've heard way too many horror stories that uh, are along that line. So my thing about buying claims is don't buy a claim until you have the skills to totally evaluate it. And, and ask the buyer, says, hey, can I take my metal detector out there for an afternoon, take some samples and, uh, and see what I find? I'll, I'll even give you the gold if I find any because it's not my claim yet. And it, if the guy says, sure, I'll go out there with you and maybe show you some of the places where I found gold and hopefully you'll find some for yourself. You know, and you have the skills to evaluate the ground, okay, you want to buy a claim, that's fine. Uh, but if you don't know what you're doing and you're just taking somebody's word for it, don't do that. I've, I've heard way, way too many horror stories along that line. What I do recommend, okay, I recommend if you're green and new, don't buy a claim. No, what you should do is join a club much much cheaper a lot of clubs are in the neighborhood of 50 to maybe even a hundred dollars a year to join a whole lot cheaper than three to five thousand or ten thousand for a mining claim so join a club in your area there's a number of prospecting clubs you know the gpaa is a nationwide system of clubs but there's local non-gpa clubs out there that are all good um and you can meet people. The advantage of a club too is that you can meet people, and and uh, you know you can ask them, "Hey, Joe, how do you like that metal detector that you bought?" And you can get opinions like that. Or, "Hey, Joe, can I try your metal detector out for ten minutes and see what I think of it?" And you know, give it a little bit of a test or something like that. A lot of times, the guys will be very helpful. So. Um, Clubs are good in multiple ways, and almost all clubs have a ground that's they, they, for club members to go out and prospect, and they've been tried and tested by guys that know what they're doing. And so you get decent ground, access to it, relatively cheap, um, potential experience from guys that you'd be working with that can help you. Uh, the clubs are nothing but a double bonus, thumbs up. I mean. I really highly, highly recommend clubs for guys, especially guys that are new, but also for guys that are uh, that are more experienced. A lot of guys that are experienced, you know, they have the access to these claims. I know guys that join a couple of different clubs. You know, they say, well, this club has claims in this area that I like, but this other uh, group has claims over here in an area that I like, and so they'll join because they're not that it's not that expensive to join. So join a club. It's a, a great idea. I did a video on my recommendation for joining a club and talking a little bit about the experience and, and what to do, my suggestions of how to get in with the club and, you know, work with people. 
Uh, so that's my homework video for this one. I'm going to put a link to it up here. And again, um, seriously consider the, the club thing because I think it's a good idea. And uh, you can click on this video now or you can wait till later and come back and to this point in the, the video. I'm going to go ahead and continue with our, our final point in this part one, which is how long will it take me to learn? Well, I've been talking about this. It's a skill and you got to learn the skill and it takes time. How long will it take me to learn? Well, like any skill, it depends on how much time you put into it. Let's say you wanted to learn to play the piano, but I'm only going to put in five minutes a month fiddling with the piano. Well, I'm never going to learn to play the piano five minutes a month. It's the same thing with plumbing. You know, I'm going to buy a pipe wrench. Uh, but I'm not going to learn anything about plumbing. I'm just going to assume that I'm okay. It doesn't work that way. So uh, learning how long will it take you to learn depends on how much you put into it. You know, if, if you can only get out and prospect once or twice a year, um, that's going to take you a long time. If you can only get out and prospect once a month, eh, you're going to learn a little faster. If you can get out a couple times a month, you're going to be okay. Now, when I first got into metal detecting for nuggets, I'd actually been prospecting for years with pans and sluice boxes, dry washers, and the like. So I had a good feel for where the gold was and where you would find the gold, and that helped me way along the way in, uh, in learning to nugget detect. Guys that, you know, say, well, I've metal detected for coins and jewelry at parks and schools and old houses, you know, places, sites like that, historic sites. Um, actually, the, the metal detecting for coins is so different from nugget detecting that you're going to have to unlearn some of the stuff that you've learned hunting coins because it works different with nuggets. And the, the trick is, is that nuggets are generally smallish compared to a coin. You know, I tell people that a nickel is roughly equivalent to a quarter ounce nugget. So you're going to be looking for things that are, you know, 20%, 10% of a nickel. And a lot of guys just, you know, they go too fast and don't listen to faint targets. We're going to talk more about faint targets in the second part of this video. But it's something that you need to learn these skills. And so I put a link to finding your first nugget with a metal detector. That's my homework video, my last homework video for this set. And I'm gonna put a link to it up here. And I think it will help you. A lot of good suggestions in that video about the skills and time and everything else that it takes to find your first nugget of gold. So the more you know what you're doing, the more successful you're gonna be in finding nuggets. So like I say, be sure to check out the homework videos because they will give you the extra oomph that you need to know to buy a metal detector with confidence, to operate it with confidence, and to, with work, with effort, learn to find gold on your own successfully and, and to enjoy it. Because I really enjoy finding nuggets. It's, it's honestly my favorite thing to do. I still, of course, do panning and sluicing and dry washing, but nugget detecting has become my favorite. Now, I want to say, because I get asked this a lot too, um, I don't offer any personal training. I don't offer, uh, you know, I get guys asking me, well, will you take me out and teach me the skills of, of nugget detecting? Um, I, I don't offer service. I get so many people asking that that, I could be doing that 40 hours a week every week. So I don't offer that, but what I do offer is these sets of videos and the training that I have on the uh, training that I have for the for finding gold. And I have a playlist too that goes with the homework videos that I've highlighted here. I've got a playlist and I put, I'm gonna put the playlist down in the uh, description below and if you go in there and find my playlist on metal detecting for nuggets you'll find a whole bunch of videos more than just I've, what I've referred to here a whole bunch more that will give you the skills and knowledge and and information will detector reviews and all kinds of stuff so there's a lot of useful information there and so this will finish the 
first part, but the second part is going to come out next week. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Now, in addition to all those videos that I have in that playlist, um, it, it, like I say, I don't do personal training, but I also wrote a book. And my book covers a whole bunch of other things, geology and different things related to gold prospecting and related kinds of prospecting for diamonds or platinum. And, uh, you know, my book is like an encyclopedia. It, it's almost 300 pages long. It really is a uh, quite a book. It's one of the most popular books ever about gold prospecting. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my book right now. So let me tell you a little bit more about my book. Um, it's called Fistful of Gold, and I wrote it because I want you to be able to go out and find for yourself Fistful of Gold. And uh, you can see that it's a, an encyclopedia with all kinds of information, pictures, and that sort of thing. It's not in color, but uh, uh, color would have cost me a lot more to have printed, and so the book would have cost a lot more. It's for sale on Amazon, and you can pick it up. I'll put a link in the description below. I also serve as the editor for a, a prospecting magazine. It's ICMJ's Prospecting and Mining Journal. And honestly, you should check that out. We've got stories uh, and information, legal stuff, everything you know to increase your skills as a prospector. I write articles in this every month, and a lot of other very experienced prospectors contribute to the magazine as well. So check the magazine out. Also, I have a website, and the website is uh, at nevadaoutbackgems.com. I'll put a link for it in the description below. But there's gobs of information there that you will find useful in your prospecting efforts. Finally, I want to say that I really appreciate your comments and thoughts and even a positive criticism. Don't come on there and just toss out insults because I'll just delete your comments. But if you've got uh, helpful things to say and questions to ask, do write and, and put those in the comments because I answer my comments to people and uh, you'll hear from me in, in, you know, in, in responding to you. Uh, so if you've enjoyed this video and you like what you see and you're interested in uh, finding out more, well then sign up, subscribe, and hit the, uh, the notification bell so they'll let you know when I post new videos. And, you know, like it and share it if, again, you, you see stuff that you really are excited about. And I'll be coming out with lots more new videos. And so we'll see you again real soon.